Hi, I'm Kenton Kober, pastor of Creative, and it's my privilege to spend the next few minutes with you. Today we'll be talking about the importance of communion, the Lord's table. I grew up as one of 10 siblings, so I'm a bit of an expert on how to behave or not behave at the dinner table. When we would argue or complain, all we needed to do was look to the head of the table, to my father, and be reminded that we're a family and we should be grateful. One look towards our mother and we'd see the perfect example of table manners. In a similar fashion, when coming to the Lord's table, there are also practices and behaviors that can enhance the experience and allow us to fully participate. If you're watching this on the day it was posted, today is Monday Thursday. Tonight we'll be joining together at a table for one of the most meaningful gatherings we do each year, Holy Week Communion Service. This year at our Kesslinger, Mill Creek, and North Aurora campuses. Along with churches around the globe and throughout time, we stopped during Holy Week to remember the events that took place in the upper room that Thursday night. To the disciples, this was just another Passover commemoration. They and their families have been doing it all their lives. They would gather at the table and throughout the meal, replay what took place during their Egyptian captivity and the time of the plagues. They remembered when the people of Israel were instructed to put blood on their doorposts and the angel of death was to pass over them. The Passover meal that was designed to remind Israel of that event is one that included four cups of wine with different significance, vegetables dipped in salt water, a dry bread called matzah, bitter herbs, and finally, a feast. In Mark 14, we read, while they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly, I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. On that night, Jesus did things differently. He took the bread and flipped the script. Instead of the usual prayer for the matzah, which was blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe who has sanctified us with his laws and commanded us to eat matzah. He said, this is my body. Instead of the cup prayer, blessed are you, God, ruler of the universe who creates the fruit of the vine. He said, this is my blood. The disciples quickly realized something new was happening. In 1 Corinthians 11, Paul retells the story from the gospels. Then he adds the following. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We see that in the years following his resurrection, the church was instructed to continue what Christ initiated and beyond. But like any ritual or repetitive perfunctory task, we can quickly begin to mindlessly participate and the intended depth and meaning is lost. The base word of communion is the word commune. It's a rich word that we don't often use very often. When is the last time you invited someone over to your house to commune with you? The word goes beyond just being together. Commune means to share one's spiritual, intimate thoughts or feelings with someone, or to feel in close spiritual contact with. You hear the phrase communing with nature, for example. But the question needs to be asked during communion, with whom are we communing? There's a vertical and horizontal answer to that question. Vertically, we're communing with God as we remember the sacrifice of his son. But horizontally, we're communing with each other. So often we see communion as a personal, one-on-one -on -one experience with God. And to view it that way misses a big part of the experience. The disciples shared the experience with each other and Christ himself. We too are sharing the experience with one another and followers of Christ throughout all time. So how can observing communion help us in our walk with Jesus? First of all, let's talk about preparation. Paul makes a big deal about preparing ourselves for communion. It just so happens to be the kinds of things we're encouraged to do every day, but it's especially emphasized when coming to the table. Paul says, Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. We are urged to examine our hearts and confess our sins. And since communion is vertical and horizontal, 
we remember the teaching of Jesus when he said, Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them. Then come and offer your gift. Jesus is teaching about offering our worship, and it applies to communion worship as well. We are instructed to come to the table clear before God and one another. Secondly, taking communion reminds us of Christ's real presence at the table, but also his consistent presence with us. Throughout the history of the church, there have been many understandings of the meaning of Christ's presence in the communion experience. But in our tradition, we hold to the belief that Christ is real and spiritually present in the communion experience. We pause, we reflect, and we celebrate the fact that he is with us. Don't skip this step and jump right to Christ's sacrifice. He promised to be with us, and communion reminds us of that truth. Thirdly, we retell the story of his death to ourselves and others. We are told that by celebrating communion, we are proclaiming the death of Christ until he comes. Therefore, communion is a persistent reminder of Christ's sacrifice. Passover retold the story of Egyptian captivity. We retell the story of Christ's work on the cross and proclaim his death to one another in communion. Finally, we look to the future and celebrate his life. Communion is about death and life. Christ taught, truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. He is alive and waiting. We look forward to the ultimate fulfillment of this sacrament and are reminded each day that we gather that the day is coming. Just as the Last Supper was the fulfillment of the Passover, the feast we celebrate in heaven is the fulfillment of the Lord's Supper. Next time you participate in communion, perhaps tonight, look inside, examine your heart and prepare your soul, and look up. Remember that he is very present with you Look around, remember that you are experiencing in community, and look forward. The day is coming when we will all be together at the marriage feast of the Lamb. And when we look to the head of the table, there we will find Jesus, our Savior and Lord.